All right, you guys. Look at the food. Look at the food. Look at the food. Do you see the food? Mm -hmm. Do you see my face? Mm -hmm. Let's say grace. All right, let's see. Is this going to work for us? Is this going to work for us? Is this going to work for us? If it doesn't work for us, it has not worked for us. In Jesus' name, Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for the nourishment of this food. Lord, even the subject we are going to discuss, may you receive all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want you guys to join me, eat my at-home breakfast. No fast food for 31 days. We have some grits, uh, pancakes, egg whites, and turkey bacon. And coffee. No creamer and no coffee. But, um, what do you call that? Protein. You guys, I gotta work out. My booty, my arms, they just need to get shaped again. Because they... They not. They not. But anyway. Forget my shirt. I've been cleaning. My house smells good. Washing clothes. The repair guy's supposed to come today at 10.30. Let me sell Shisha. Let me sell Shisha. Okay. So, I want to talk about a touchy subject. There's another subject I want to talk about, but I have to get permission from my husband to talk about that. Some of you are probably clutching your chest. When I say permission, this adult woman from my husband. And that's what I want to discuss. I want to talk about submission. Which is all about trust. Submission is all about trust. Let me take you back. As a kid... I grew up with my grandparents. My mother died. My father remarried. Had a great relationship with my dad. But we stayed with my grandparents. I saw how they worked. I really didn't understand them until after my grandma died. We ate chicken all the time. We did, you know, certain things what we did all the time. When I went to go... Be with my grandfather, you know, try to keep him company, you know, be there doing my break. I said, I, this is submission. This is submission. She really was a strong woman that catered to my grandfather. Y'all think about Beyonce catered to your man. Ah, uh -uh. this woman really catered to this man, you know, and, um, it opened my eyes what submission, what, tr what, tr what tr true submission really was. So like I said, let's go back to when I was like 17, 16. I love weddings. Love weddings. But no lie. I hated the part when I said, love, honor, obey, and submit. You messed up the whole the whole, you know, event. I'm enjoying it literally up until that point. And I'm a teenager. I literally would enjoy a wedding up until that point. No lie. No lie. And I remember going to my cousin's wedding. And I was riding back with my auntie. And I remember telling her that, like, I love love. I love weddings. I want to get married one day. 
I said, but, and I don't even know how we got on this subject and why I was so um, transparent with her. But it changed my life. I said, but when it comes to when they say love, honor, obey, and submit, ooh, they, it's, that part I almost want to throw up, you know? It ruins the whole, whole, whole ceremony. And my auntie said, submission is you're going to, when you meet the right person, you're going to wake up. You're going to go to sleep. You're going, your whole mission in life is just to make that person happy. To make that person comfortable. That's what submission is. When you meet the right person, oh, you're, that's going to be your desire. You're not going to have to, it's not going to be by force. It's not going to be something that you, um, that you're going, that's going to be contrived and that you're going to have to really work at. That is going to be your desire, to make them comfortable, to make them happy. And so that just kind of stuck with me. That was just a word. That was planted in me at, at as a teenager. And that I carried on, you know. And so when I was there with my grandfather, and the only thing he wanted to eat was chicken. And the only thing he wanted me to do was fry it. <laughs> That's what my grandma did. Because all she wanted to do was make him happy, make him comfortable. And my grandfather was not the easiest person to get along with. But I just remember uh, her, him coming, you know, getting ready to come into the house. And it was five girls. It was one bathroom. Girls, get your bath. Get cleaned up. Get the kitchen cleaned up. We say we always save the biggest chicken piece of chicken for my granddaddy. We tired of eating chicken. It's five. It's only one of him, but we tired of eating chicken every day. But guess what? We're gonna have again tomorrow. Chicken. You know. And so after my grandma was gone, I said, Ah, this is submission. That's submission. And so when I met my 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 husband. All I want to do was make him happy. I know we live in a world where it's all about us. You know, what, what, what is he doing for us? How is he making us comfortable? But the Bible says we are a helpmate. You know, and all I want to do is make him comfortable. If you watch his video, you know, he knows that <gasps> coming to this America, things have to change. You know, I couldn't cook. <laughs> and actually, you always hear me say that my um, grandfather told me I would never get married. <laughs> that was the time he told me when I, after my grandmother died, when I would go down there to try to be there for a week for him and cook and clean. He'll be okay for the first two days. That third day, he said, oh, you ain't never going to get married. You can't cook. Which stuck with me. But we thank God that God made provision for this girl who can't cook. So, as my husband said, things had to change for him. My husband's been a musician since he was 15 years old. When he came to America... We got married. We had kids. You know, he had to help out with those kids. You know, I remember one of his um, sisters, when she first got here, oh, she had a lot to say. Ah, he's doing this with the kids. You know, she's fresh from, from Nigeria. He's doing this with the kids. He's in the kitchen. He's even bringing her plates. Ay! Hmm. And when finally her husband came, hmm, hmm. You see, this America is not Nigeria. You know? And so, one thing my husband has always been, he's always been a musician. You know? Ever since he was 15 years old. 
his family didn't like it. My husband was the black sheep of the family because he didn't want to say he didn't say he wanted to be a doctor. He didn't say he wanted to be a barrister. He didn't say he wanted to be an engineer. He said he wanted to be a musician. And he was pretty much the black sheep of his family. And so, even though now he'll go to Nigeria, I'm always like, oh, why are you not spending time with your brother? Why haven't you da, da, da? Why haven't you did this? I have to understand that he truly was the black sheep of the family and um, ostracized by his aunties and uncles and um, he's still kind of dealing with that a little bit like he has to understand that all things work together for the good of them that love Christ and called according to his purpose and so hey your dream to be a musician is the one is how you got to America you know but we thank God so nonetheless my husband's been a musician since he was 15 years old even if you go up here, there's certain um, professions that eh, are not practical. These include professional athlete. These include musician. And here I go. I'm so practical. I'm a nurse. I clock in. I clock out. And here's my husband who's a musician, who I met him working, a musician at the church. I met him working as a musician with a band. That's how I met him. Okay, you guys. And so when finances, finances got difficult and hard, I'm looking at him like kind of sideways, like, bro, we finna do something else. We, 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 we gonna do something else, you know, but I couldn't take that dream away from him. I couldn't, I just couldn't because I want to make him happy. The worst thing is for a man who has a dream, especially an artist like that is to walk around depressed. I couldn't take that from him. So I submitted to him as he is a musician. And guess what? If God gave me this musician as a husband, so be it. Number one, I had to submit to his dream. Not easy. It's not easy being married to a dreamer. Not easy at all. And you have everyone coming in. It wasn't easy. Number two, submission. Submission takes trust. It takes trust because I had to understand my husband's older than me. He's the eldest of his family. I had to trust that he trusted God, number one, and that God was leading him. I can't say how to submit to a husband who we know is being used by the, the powers of this world, whether it be lust, whether it be, you know, money, whether it be Satan himself, God forbid, but I trusted God that this man is being led by the Holy Spirit. And so when I submit to him, I'm submitting to God. And it wasn't easy. I, my family came for me. My twin sister came for me. And my twin sister is also married to Nigerian. Came for me. My daddy. My daddy who always said women are not in place. They won't listen to their husbands. Da, 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 da. He came for me. Like, I understand submissive, submissiveness, but uh, this is too, too much submission. How can you be too much submission? Especially if it's if it's if it's not causing ruckus in my house, if it's if it's peace in my house, they're like ah too much submission. No, no, 
It's not. So when you hear me say I have to take permission from my husband, it truly is. Because guess what? I respect him as authority. I trust his leadership. I'm not going to ever say I, I don't question his leadership. Listen, I won't ever say I don't question his leadership at times, but I trust his leadership. And I'm never going to say we don't debate. But baby, when we come out on a united front, we're going to go with whatever he says. I'm not going to if you know me, you know Kiki going to say something. But we're going to come out a united front. And you have to just trust God. You have to. When it comes to marriage, uh, submitting is trusting the person God has put in authority over you on this earth. My daddy is gone. This is the authority. My grandfather is gone. This is the authority that God has put over my head. And I have to pray for him that he will continue to walk the path that he's supposed to walk. So when they call me, uh, Kiki, can you do this? Well, let me talk to Wally. Uh, I know you're going to talk to your husband. I know you're going to ask your husband. Uh, he just controls you. Oh, he, 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 you don't have your own opinion. You don't have it. Where, where have it, where has it taken me wrong? <laughs> where there's been some places that you question the man that God has put in my life. Where has it taken me wrong? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. You know, it's is submission hard. It's not when you when you when you trust the person. Well, can it get difficult? Yes. But submission is about trust. So if you're telling me you're not ready to submit to no man, you ain't finna ask your husband for no permission for nothing, you don't trust him. You don't trust him. And that's, that's just the bottom line. Like I said, I'm not ever going to say you're not going to question the decision you guys decide to, to, to go with. But if, if you just outright, he says go right and you go left. He says, hey, have a seat. You stand up. I don't see how you guys are going to make it. You know, I just don't see it. But it's, it's okay to submit. It's okay to submit. And no, it doesn't mean he's controlling. And that's the biggest misconception about Nigerian men is that they're controlling. Controlling who? Controlling what? They're straightforward, yes. But controlling, no. I don't, I don't mind being submitted to someone who I know has my best interest in mind. And that's what my auntie said. All you want to do is make him happy. And that's what I... God has given me that man that all I want to do is make happy. He's on his 13th year of Ankara. When I see that, do you not know how, how happy that is? What if I had killed his dream and said, bro, you in America, we got two kids. You need to go find something, clock in, clock out. You need to become a nurse. You need to become a CNA. Uh, you, you know, you need to. Mm -mm. Do you think we'll be happy? Do you not think that even right now he would still feel like he had an unfulfilled dream? Do you know that's why men go through these midlife crises is because they feel that they have not fulfilled their, their purpose in life? My husband can say a lot of things, but he can never say that I have not supported his dream. He can never say that I have not been submissive to him, that I have not honored him, that I have not respected him. Try it. Oh, yeah, there are times where I want to control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no lie. That's, that's life. But it, I can stand here and say, hey, I've done my job. I've done my best. And you know what? After you've done your best, let God do it. Don't, I don't, a lot of people don't want to submit because they've come from situations where they've been abused, where they, their, their submission or their, their um, relinquishing of their own power has been misconstrued and 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 has been abused pray even if it's your own husband pray pray for god to change your heart and even to change his heart and just watch how you will succeed in life when you are actually in your right place like my dad would say let him 
Let God be true and let man be a liar. Every man be a liar. Let God be the head of your house. Let your husband be the head of your house and let you come under his covering. And I'm telling you, you will be blessed. Us women, yes. Let me do this. If we if, if we had my way, we, we're a year 12. You know, we've got this house a year 12 of our marriage. We would have got this at year one if it was left up to me. But God had to continue to tell me, trust me. Trust your husband. Your husband chose you. Your husband chose you. He must have a good picker. He must know what he's doing because he chose you. Okay? So if he chose you, even the last place you moved to that you absolutely loved, he chose it. So trust him. Trust that he he knows. Trust that I that you know God is still the same yesterday, forever. You know, yesterday, today, and forevermore. God changes not. Trust. And I, I finally judged myself. And I did what I could do on my part, actively. And I let God be true and, and every man a liar. And boom, here we are. In God's own timing. When I finally submitted to my husband about every desire I wanted for our family. So, no. Nigerian men are not controlling. Men are not controlling. It's just being submissive. And I know submissive is a bad word, but let us pray how to, we can learn practical ways on how to be submissive. And, you know, that will be our next talk. How practical ways on being submissive. Very simple. Very simple. All right, you guys. Thank you for joining me in eating breakfast with me. I'll check you back later. Bye.